Hello, I'm Professor Farhana Sultana of the Department of Geography and the Environment at the Maxwell School of Citizenship and Public Affairs at Syracuse University. I'm also the Research Director for Environment in the Program for the Advancement of Research on Conflict and Collaboration here at the Maxwell School. Today, I want to talk to you about climate justice and how feminist insights can allow for more equitable interventions to be envisaged and co-created for more meaningful impacts. First of all, as global events of climate-related disasters have become more profound in recent years, greater attention has been given to something called climate justice. Many of you are probably aware of it and familiar with it, but let me just talk you through a little bit of it. The injustices of intensifying climate breakdown overlapping with injustices of other things, such as the COVID-19 pandemic, have laid bare the fault lines of suffering across sites and scales in recent years. A climate justice framework helps us think through and address those inequities. Climate change has had unequal and uneven burdens across places whereby the planetary crisis is now understood as one where there is a common but differentiated responsibility. Communities that have contributed the least to climate change are now the ones who are most unduly burdened and harmed by it for decades. Historical and geographical differences are highlighted and brought to the forefront in discussing climate justice instead of only climate science. Things like colonialism, capitalism, and economic globalization are all imbricated in the production of uneven climate injustices, and critiques of these interlocking systems are increasingly ushered into mainstream debates on climate justice. Because to have justice, it becomes imperative to first identify injustices that exist and then address underlying causes of them. So climate justice is essentially about praxis. Praxis means theoretically informed practice with reflection, one where there is continual feedbacks and integrations. Equity considerations mean focusing on actions that reduce harm and remove harms, thereby making the underlying commitment of climate justice to political action and to solidarity building. Critical approaches to climate justice look at issues of responsibility, exposure, vulnerability, and ethics. Climate justice is thus about accountability and obligations, as well as ethics and human rights, all of which are part of justice. This means addressing the current global political economic systems that produce and reinforce temporal and spatial harms and injustices. That means intergenerational, intragenerational, and spatial, and also colonial and post-colonial. The goal is to not further burden impacted communities with further harms from climate-related events and processes. Climate justice approaches seek to expose root causes of climate change to address and dismantle the systemic issues and structures in different ways. These include dismantling fossil fuel dependency, defetishizing endless growth on a finite planet, challenging non-participatory democracy, resisting extractive exploitation of natural resources, among other things. Climate justice focuses on aspects of equity, fairness, and reparations in addressing climate change, and thereby it pays close attention to socio-ecological connections. As a result, we need to understand what the differentiated vulnerabilities and precarities are. Fundamental consideration is necessary to issues such as power, power structures, societal disparities, and how these are embedded within multiscalar issues such as wider political economy, globalization, and so on. So an important aspect that has become apparent over years is that climate justice won't be effective or equitable without feminist perspective and perspectives and insights being integrated into them. Critical feminist analysis reveals often overlooked or buried concerns, thereby exposing various inequities and harms. 
This is because feminist scholarship integ integrates various insights of anti-racist, anti-colonial and decolonial scholarship to advance justice-oriented praxis and possibilities of better futures. Indeed, it was at the Bali COP or COP, the Conference of Parties in 2007, where no climate justice without gender justice became a rallying cry from feminists and social movements. Women have been at the forefront of the climate justice movement and they have raised awareness of the importance of paying attention to the differentiated gendered burdens and harms around the world. With climate change, there is increasing intersectional gendered marginalization, inequalities, and vulnerabilities. Because climate change has uneven, unequal, and long-lasting impacts that depend on where you live, who you are, and what you have, feminism helps identify these often invisible contours of sufferings by highlighting or unearthing the under and unappreciated ways that people relate to each other in society as individuals, groups, and institutions. Approaching the climate crisis by centering feminist insights can help formulate better policies and projects that help improve life for everyone. Generally, feminist scholars examine the iterative and multiple knock-on effects from socioecological changes to, gen to gender relations in any given context by using the concept of intersectionality, which is paying attention to unrecognized inequities in society across groups and the interlocking harms that occur. Because vulnerable communities are not homogenous, they're gendered intersectionally by gender, class, race, indigeneity, migrant status, nationality, ability, and so on. And this necessitates investigating and addressing contextual axes of oppression and differentiations. For instance, climate-fueled water scarcity means women and girls are spending enormous amounts of time and labor fetching water around the world. This therefore has direct bearing on gender well-being and futures in such contexts of water scarcity. Feminist climate justice scholarship engages with intersectionality to demonstrate how inequities like patriarchy compound socioecological crises, it avoids essentializing women or men into binary categories, but looks at the ways that interlocking systems of oppression and exploitation operate across axes such as gender, class, race, ability, and so on. It offers a more complex view of gender, the varied risks, responsibilities, and rights that exist and that can be possibly accounted for. Thus, integrating feminist insights into critical climate justice fosters more inclusive planning and action beyond techno-managerialistic or just economic modeling of climate solutions. It can strengthen women's movements for strategic activism, advocacy, capacity building, resources, and network access. It also documents women's lived experiences and elevates differential voices. Thus, intersectionality has become a more complex, um, has appreciated more complex understanding of climate justice impacts and the abilities of how people cope, adapt, and renew. We are able to get better understandings of what's going on in the ground. Such praxis that continue feminist traditions of inquiry into inequities and injustices promote keener attention to context by underscoring connections among people and institutions and processes and elevates the awareness of those links. Once we can see similarities and differences between groups of people and in between nations and communities, we can address shortcomings systemically and frame better policies for more equitable solutions. Again, remember, the goal is to elevate a range of voices so that marginalized people are heard and heeded because people are never voiceless, they're simply unheard in the corridors of power. So if we want to have more equitable action in society, we therefore need to integrate these interdisciplinary feminist insights. Obviously, feminism is not some magic bullet. There are other mechanisms and challenges that need to be brought into consideration. However, feminism, feminisms, 
different forms of feminist scholarship can provide a roadmap of analysis, advocacy, and action that is suited to overcoming the biggest challenges of our time while promoting fairness, health, and well being for society and individuals. So moving forward, we need to think about moving away from the extractive economy to, re to the regenerative economy, which has been put forth by scholars. So there are interrelated and distinct approaches that we can think about when we're thinking about moving forward. And these include things like reciprocity, redistribution of power, self-determination, reparations, care, divestment, solidarity, solidarity across differences, recognizing the importance of feminist insights and transforming public institutions to enhance deeper democracy and reformulations of in international frameworks and institutions to address better ways to think of something called Build Back Better. Because the rhetoric of Build Back Better for a post-pandemic era of climate change has really raised questions for many of us because we need to ask things like, what does this mean? Who is deciding their content? What will be improved? Where will this take place? Who will it benefit? Why? How is issues, how are issues such as feminist insights or racial harms being taken into considerations? Because post-pandemic recovery may not offer gender sen sensitive or race sensitive responses unless it is specifically made to do so. Addressing rapidly compounding injustices with gender just planning for post-pandemic recovery that includes climate justice actually offers better pathways forward that are not only just, but they're more sustainable in the long term. For instance, many feminists have been calling for moving away from fossil fuel-based recovery because not just to slow down climate breakdown, but for better fiscal recovery that includes climate financing that is gender accountable. Some uh, specific recent results put forth by feminist activists have been the feminist Green New Deal in the USA and the feminist fossil free future in the Asia Pacific, for instance. Such endeavors would require multi-scalar gender disaggregated data collection, greater monitoring, accountability, adequate capacities and budgetary resources to be allocated for intersectional analysis and therefore the formulation of better policies and programs that are responsive and redress issues where necessary. So in conclusion, attention to feminist climate justice encourages policymakers and citizens to approach climate change in more comprehensive ways. It calls for accountability to intersectional analysis, to interdisciplinarity and transdisciplinarity, to better policymaking and to better responsive planning because we need to be more attuned to the lived experiences and wisdom of differently situated subjects so that we can heed and hear folks who have been largely marginalized or erased or silenced because we want to have more inclusive policies and programs that are more justice oriented. Because if we pay attention to fine tuning existing power relations in any context, we can refine international frameworks and reconfigure how disruptive climate patterns and changes can be more equitably addressed locally. Advancing critical feminist climate justice by making it more meaningful and inclusive thus becomes about recognizing and reducing the intersectional harms by gender, race, indigeneity, and so on that occur within and between communities. This means addressing the reducing of the harms and sharing the burdens of changes, not compounding further burdens and sufferings. So in deploying a feminist uh, climate justice approach uh, allows for even the hope of a more possible comprehensive accountability for the various systemic injustices that overlap and compound sufferings. Therefore, it becomes necessary to revolutionize how people think about climate change for more climate justice and more specifically a feminist oriented climate justice instead. 
Obviously, there are no easy, quick processes or uh, easy solutions because these are complex, challenging issues. But we need to investigate, expose, and understand interconnected injustices so that we can address them more equi equitably for everyone. It is therefore an imperative to reimagine re and configure pathways forward. And different changes and challenges will therefore need to be envisioned and not seek out just one universalist truth or solution, but recognize the insights that feminist scholars have taught us about the importance of context, about the recognition of inconclusive answers, but to seek out better solutions nonetheless. Because if we do not recognize and tackle systemically issues that are ongoing, restorative measures will ultimately fail, collapsing under the weight of their own inequality. And therefore this reminds us to continually unlearn, to relearn, and to take stock. It is the only way forward out of the current climate crisis. Thank you for listening. And if you'd like to learn more about the research from which this talk was drawn, please do check out my scholarship and publications as a whole or specific publications that I refer to uh, throughout this talk. Um, feel free to visit my website, which is www.farhanasultana.com. And thank you again for joining me.